Okay. There we go. This is part of the high speed internet that you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I'm going to those guys' names. Okay, Mr. Chair, we're ready. Okay. Call the uh, September 26th meeting of the uh, City of Wildwood Historic Preservation Commission to order. All roll. Commissioner Scott? Here. Commissioner Compton? Here. Commissioner Rubis? Commissioner Sprunger? Commissioner Hammond? Here. Commissioner Stevens? Here. Chair Wojciechowski? Here. Alternate Mountain? Alternate Bacher? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Liaison Gragnani? Excuse me. Um, Council Liaison Edens, Council Liaison Farmer. Okay, well, uh, thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, hopefully, none of the other, well, I know uh, Lauren's at the other meeting. Lauren, I um, excused her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go where you want it, you're a council person. I'm not going to stop you. But, uh, so she was, she asked, uh, we're stuck. Right. Right. So, thank council you. liaison farmer is a newly appointed city council member. Um, council member Taylor had resigned a few weeks back and um, Joe Farmer is the new council member. He was appointed to our committee, but he has a work conflict this evening. So we should see him in October. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, did everybody attend the uh, the well the Wildwood celebration? I know what I was there for that one. Sorry, everybody yeah. there. But how did the uh, Wildwood? Uh, Sorry, um, can we do minutes? Can we do minutes? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll seek a motion to approve the Historic Preservation Sorry, Commission so minutes of uh, July twenty fifth. I'll move. I said. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, Paul, I thought you were jumping to the first item. Yeah. <laughs> that was just Paul. That was just Paul. Well, that was remarks. So. Go back with those. I'd like to hear them. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Um, so we get the motion to, they're all approved. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so at the, the uh, uh, Big Chief event, I didn't make that event. I didn't either. Okay, you were there? I was there the whole time. Okay, yeah, the whole time. Uh, two to five. Okay. It wasn't as crowd, I mean, not as busy as the, there are a lot of people there. Not as busy at the booth, but I think we had some nice conversations and new people showed up and learned new stuff, so. I know it was, uh, I know that, um, Craft had their grand opening at the same time, so it was uh, competing uh, activities on the ends of Route 66. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Through Wildwood, which is good. And we did, I was able to get the, uh, the Route 66 shield marking installed the day before the event, so that was timely. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so hopefully everybody said, if you haven't seen it, go get by there and see it. It looks pretty good, so kind of striking. Uh, and we'll. I, I, I didn't get a chance to look at it. We'll well, I'm sure I walked right by it. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I got a picture of it. It's, it's the back. I didn't see your phone. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so hopefully we'll see. It. We'll see if we can get some budget next year to do those all along Route 66, and we'll set the trend for uh, the state as far as cities that do that stuff. And I don't know if anybody has done that yet. So. It was a freebie too. So that one was free. Maybe better. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, public comment, no public here, but, uh, okay, so we got a ready, ready for action two items, uh, recap of the Celebrate Wildwood and Route 66 events. So really, we um, we have a little memo that you know on each of the events to kind of recap what um, what we did at each, what we handed out at each. And first of all, the department really just wants to thank you all for your time. Um, those were long days, especially to celebrate Wildwood Day. Although we really lucked out weather-wise, um, could have been 
the difference of the day. But um, y'all worked very hard, and we appreciate the help because we would not have been able to, to pull that off. So first and foremost, we want to thank you all for, for your help. Um, if you want, we can just start with Celebrate Wildwood. We um, gave out 300. We had 500 books printed of the history books and gave out about 300 at Celebrate Wildwood and gathered nearly $1,000 in um, donations, which was great. So, um, you know, we really want to know what you all thought, what your impressions were. Is there anything we should do different for next year? Are there any things people were asking for that we didn't have covered? Um, what are your thoughts? People wanted to buy the, uh, the location plaques. Yeah. <laughs> the very, yeah. Okay. They and, wanted but, the little version. Yeah, they wanted like a little version. There weren't that many of them, but there's. I, I mean, heard there's, several people yeah, there's, asked there's, it. There's a number of people that asked about those. Um, okay. Which would be kind of cool. It's obviously a limited demand type of thing, but it's interesting to see people uh, interested in those. So. Other than that, I mean, we had some, we had a good flow through there. People yeah. were all uh, really interested. Uh, didn't even have to pull them in with a hook. They just came in on their own. <laughs> and I uh, really, uh, they really liked the, how we had things set up. The banners went over really yes. good. Mm -hmm. Was the map banner helpful? Yes. So for placements? Yeah. Okay. Was there any other banner when you were out there that you thought, oh, I really wish we would have done? Additional. I think we pretty much have it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I think the stuff we had to give out, people were interested in. They wanted it. They took it. It wasn't just, oh, well, walk over to the next trash can and dump it. But they were interested in it. Uh, I think uh, to have more, like you, you did for our Route 66, a little spots along the route there. A couple, mm -hmm. you know, little tours that. Uh, People could take walking or biking that point out the historical things of, okay. of different uh, different tours people could take. But uh, I think they liked everything we had. I, I enjoyed it, and I think they did. People coming by <laughs> enjoyed it. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. No, well, we have one lady that she wanted to know if they, uh, if our if our. Uh, uh, Historic community locations are our signs were ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some are some are. That. Yeah, yeah. Some you can pull up to for easy. Yeah, yeah. We had a discussion, and I know you've talked before about doing a bike tour. And Travis and I had a discussion just this week about um, in 2018 through our Parks and Rec, we did a, a project called Hike and Seek, and we did geocaching where we hid things in our parks and trails and throughout the year people would find them um, and turn them in for prizes and we thought it would be fun to to make the next hike and seek at all the historic markers. Um, we'll have to give that some thought because yeah. kelp is pretty and it, kelp makes me a little nervous to send the public there. It's yeah. not really safe exactly um, where it's located and Orville isn't installed yet. But I just want you to know we're kind of thinking ahead on ways to increase awareness on those so um yeah they're not all ada because they're not all parking even yeah. you know melrose doesn't really and grover does glanco does um, melrose is pretty it's got a little turnout though doesn't it um kind of it's right by crime camp store yeah there was a right yeah, parking right there right yeah. uh, but we can make it, we can get one of those, uh, the little signs and put it up by, uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, people, you want to add? Yeah, people really enjoy the, they like that. the books. You know, most of the time we would ask if you'd like to have one of the books, and they said no, and we'd say, well, they're free. Yeah. Yeah. We'd just <laughs> ask them for a donation for the cabin and they, oh, well, that's fine. They, right. you know, and then they would, everybody that took one, at least when I know Steve and I were there, made a donation, mm -hmm. you know, to that. So that turned out really well. That's All great. of them were very interested in the history books and then Jill came over and was signing them for them. Yeah. Once they were very Our interested. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of a neat deal. But, yeah. you know, I wouldn't think there'd have been that many people interested, yeah. but there mm -hmm. sure were. Yeah. If she we would have sold them for $10 a piece, we wouldn't have sold them. No, I don't but think we would have bought them. We got a lot, a lot. $10 mm -hmm. 
donations. Yeah. And a lot of 20s, too. A lot of 20s. A lot of 20s, yeah. yeah. Do you know how much? Yeah, yeah. Of nine hundred and something. Nine hundred and seventy-four. Yeah. For at Celebrate Wildwood. Oh, at Celebrate Wildwood. Yeah, and did then we make any at the? One hundred and thirty-two. Yeah, so you're well over a thousand dollars. And then since then, the Wildwood Historical Society has, you know, we gave them a box or two to, to give out, and people have been they've been accepting donations and have turned in about one hundred and twenty dollars additional. Oh. So, yeah, plug it away at us. Mm-hmm. And but she did come in and sign. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And she came in and signed the the rest of the book. So all that we have left, and we're almost out. There's about ten maybe wow. left. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people ask about where the cabin was going to be permanently yes. located. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by next year we'll know where that yeah. is. Right. That, that discussion cool. next month. Right? Yeah. We're gonna start that <laughs> talk in October. You know that's a that's a celebrity. That cabin's a celebrity itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, quite a few people ask as you and Steve yeah. and I are there about buying a brick. You know, because yeah. yeah. we talked about that a little bit about uh, wherever you place it. Mm -hmm. You know, once you decide where you place it, if you could sell the bricks or do mm -hmm. something with that, so that may be worth looking at next year. You know. Yep. Are we going to need more logs to um, complete it? Some, but not many. Yeah, I'll show you a picture when we get to that. Um, <coughs> the vast majority were there. Um, they were missing the, the three foot smaller sections between the windows um, and a couple that were either too damaged or um, missing completely. But most, we have enough definitely to rebuild the cabin. A lot of people that wanted to tear down their cabins, we, we ought to. Yeah. Well, here's what's interesting. Get you for some logs. We have some extra logs already in storage that, and just in that, when people have tore them down, um, and then just like when you all do a site visit and we mm -hmm. kind of negotiate and ask for some donations. So we have um, a handful of logs already. The interesting thing, um, at the end of when they were complete, they had the four facades laid out. And then they had one other section that was laid out. And they were many of the floor joists and such, but they were really, most of those had been damaged. And then there was this other stack of logs off to the side. And they said, those aren't from this cabin. They knew. And our contractor said, he goes, when, you know, he came to pick up the logs and I'm talking to him and he's like, oh, he goes, I know I put extra logs in there. He goes, I didn't even think about it when I brought them out of storage for them to go through it. And I'm like, well, I was completely impressed because I couldn't look at a log and tell you if it was 1870 or. But obviously, we picked the right firm because they knew immediately that they were not going to have it. Photographed it, had every, on the pictures, had every log numbered and yes. then went. I was out there working and going around with the picture. Identifying that mm -hmm. log laying on the floor is that log in the wall. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They had it it was fascinating to watch them. Yeah. yeah. They had them all tagged. Are yeah. they all done? The first now? day, they're done. Yeah. And you do have pictures coming up later? I do, yep. Yeah. Well, this is a pretty nice slide, too. Mm -hmm. So this was, um, you all had asked for the Route 66 um, for something that kind of showed. So I just made this that showed national and local registry along Route 66. And so it's just an 11 by 17 hand, I probably should have brought those back too, um, that were done at the Route 66 event. So, and I, you know, we kind of pared down the display banners to just along Route 66 and the historic community markers and such. Was there anything, for those of you who worked that, anything missing that we didn't cover? I think this was, like? this was a good addition for that. I think, I think the big, miss for that event was just if we were right by the stage and it just wasn't a high traffic booth traffic type of event but it it was a well trafficked event i believe in, at least from what i saw of the restaurant so yeah okay music was loud yeah that was that was, <laughs> that was part of the problem right? it's just a little hard really to talk yeah <laughs> you don't Okay, well, if there's nothing, I mean, give it some thought, and obviously we have one more year of, you know, the final chapter in the history book for Celebrate Wildwood. We have one more 
points of interest map with our last set of scenic byways. Um, and then if there's anything else that y'all can think of for Celebrate Wildwood next year, let us know. We'll, get, we'll add it on our 2020 work program. I think we should look towards the bicentennial, what we can do around that mm -hmm. and kind of push that next year leading into 2021 will be, in my opinion, one of our focuses. Okay, good point. And we're going to bring that back yep. as well, hopefully in October. We got a discussion of the revised design for Bellevue Forms Park. So Bellevue Farms, as you all, as we've discussed um, on and on for a, a bit of time, um, this is the hundred acres that's on the southeast corner of the city at St. Paul Road, which runs I don't know if it's there, runs right along here, and then Hunt Street and Jedburgh Lane. So Castlewood is, is just off this slide. So when the city first started um, with Bellevue Farms, it's, it's under a lease from St. Louis County. We have a 25 year lease. We have minimal improvements that we have to install. Those were supposed to be installed by 2017. We um, got an extension from St. Louis County. Those are supposed to be installed by January of 2020. When, so we originally hired a design firm called DG2 Design that did a master plan for, for to develop the park area. We also did a um, historic evaluation from a local architect to assess if any of the buildings were registry, um, had registry potential. His determination was that they did not, um, the building that had the most historic character, as you know, was the residence which arsons burned um, a number of years ago, probably about five years ago now. So um, at the same time, the, the last proposal that you all saw was a proposal from Gore, Gateway Off-Road Cyclists, and they were going to do an in-kind donation of building um, a number of different mountain bike um, trails and tracks. So that, when that proposal, and city council also said, let's talk to them, let's kind of take it through the courses and see how it would work. Um, the neighbors in the Sherman neighborhood, which is just kind of up here in unincorporated St. Louis County, were adamantly <coughs> opposed to the Gork proposal and came out in, in droves to say they believed it should be a more passive park. So, we have spent at a bunch of other committees uh, months and months evaluating the Gork proposal um, to see and, and discussions with the neighborhoods and, and some other things. Then we decided to do the assessment, which we gave to you all in July, which was from Missourians for Monarchs, which did a lot of flora and fauna and habitat analysis on the property. So at this point, the current proposal is there's, there isn't a grand scale, large proposal um, on, that's being evaluated right now. Gork hasn't necessarily withdrawn their proposal, although we are talking with them about putting it in a different park, in, Bellevue, in Bluffview Park. So what we've done, um, we still have the lease, we still have requirements and obligations that we need to meet with St. Louis County as far as meeting our lease agreement. And that is a minimal amount of improvements. It's improving this driveway, or this road, which is Hunt Street, to the park. It's a park roadway, it's parking, it's trash cans and, some, and a trail. So originally, um, you can see on the map, up here, these are the buildings that still exist. The residence was located right about here on the um, on this peak of this vista. The corn, cur the corn curb is here, the old barn is here, this is the caretaker's house. So originally, the plan that we had that we were working with St. Louis County on had the park road coming in and all of the improvements all the way up here where there's already existing um, buildings and such. So we've given, we've revised that and given that some new thought that maybe the better approach is to focus the improvements and limit the improvements, have a much smaller, um, it's the same amount of parking, it's just we've shortened the park entryway um, significantly so it's now just this much off Hunt Street instead of going all the way up here so we're working with St. Louis County and um, their parks department to see and I have one that's 
closer so you can kind of get a better idea um, to see what their opinion is. But because of the historical significance of this property, we are always going to bring it to you all, get your opinion, and see what your thoughts are on any development proposal that we have within Bellevue Farms. So we're here to hear your opinions, see what you think. Um, this will obviously be kind of phase one. Um, the trail, you can, you can see that the, this is the trail that's proposed, so there'll be a hiking trail um, through as well. And then there's portable restrooms would be screened and installed here. And then there's a, three mini shelters. So there'd be some picnic areas and, and such off the parking lot where people could hike. So similar to the trailhead down on yeah. uh, Centaur. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, Bellevue Farm Same Farm. designer, <laughs> that's not apparent. Yeah. Is Bellevue Farm Road going to be closed there at Hunt Street? Yes, it would not be. Um, I don't know that it will be 100% restored since this is kind of phase one and we'll be kind of evaluating, but um, yeah, the only access at this point would be. Um, is that it? Can you walk on that road? On uh, Bellevue Farm? Um, you currently can, yeah. It's a gravel drive. Is it essentially just the driveway on the property? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. if you if you dead end it at Hunt Street, then you wouldn't have people bought vehicles and things trying to, to right. Get it, we would keep the gate closed. But it, it it would still be a walking path up to the. You could walk it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Or service vehicles or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because that is really what gets you up to that to the top where and we still have to maintain and, um, the buildings and everything up there. Cut the this, this probably comes down to the cost of this. Significantly. A lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it means, it, you know, the essential thing and what, what the department keeps coming back to on this property is it's, it is a, it is an amazingly beautiful piece of ground. And it's owned by St. Louis County. It was donated by Mr. Connolly. And we, and with under our lease, we just, really believe it should be open to the public and it's a, it's something that you know people should have the ability to hike and you can bird watch you can see out into the Merrimack River Valley and so we want to the department is supportive and wants to get to that point where we've got the improvements in and it can be open to the public. St. Louis County is also part of the agreement um, they will do some programming down there um, but they don't have the money to do the infrastructure. So. Do you need our uh blessing on this to we would like it if you all are supportive would, okay. would uh, at one time we were talking about having that as a venue for some concerts or something like that is is that kind of in the back of the mind for a, the plan that we're proposing that I don't know what the ultimate if that would be a future phase this doesn't have enough parking this current phase to allow you know unless there was literally just grass parking to do something of that size and, and stature. Um, I think what we're trying to do is just get it open at this point because we just really don't know um, what the next phase should be. I would imagine the Sherman residents would object to the yeah. concert. Yeah. So I don't think that should even be on the table at all. Yeah, yeah the, the other plan that we saw that was done for this I think that's that was pretty costly plan anyway. So it was a costly plan. It has some it has some great it had an astronomy tower. We had it's a bocce ball. I mean it has some great improvements out there that were really unique and took advantage of the you know, the area and it's you know, there you can still see the night sky. It's it looked like a pretty good uh, plan. Like, I guess the term is minimally invasive well, to the site. There seems to be a lot of <laughs> that's right. the, from that, it appears there's a lot of grading. Is that the flattest area along uh, Hunt Street? Like the other corner, the southeast corner, is that just as hilly? So the, um, it looks like, yes. it looks like <laughs> a lot of so you can contour see, lines. Yeah, well, here's the, this is the tow boat of the whole yeah, property. Right. So this area here is a little bit of a steadier slope, but it, that is the vista that we want yeah. to preserve. Okay. So we're trying to stay off of this area. Sight distance yeah. and the topo right here and the sight distance here makes this corner really tough. So it, you're right, it is, there is, the topo is kind of tough all over this whole property, frankly. Um, but it's a hill. It's a hill. <laughs> it's yeah. Wildwood. It's pretty Wildwood-ish. 
So, but yes, there is um, there is some grading to get up there. But you would the other corner of what Hill Street to improve too. That is true. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, Hunt Street goes through, through Street to Street Sherman. Sherman. Yeah, it goes through all the way to Sherman. So, well, improvements that have to be. So I I've driven work. that, and I was kind of sorry I did. Yeah. You need the alignment on your car when you're yes. Yes. <laughs> Is that off a of ridge? Mm -hmm. Where is ridge in, in? So, you know, ridge turns into St. Paul if you yeah. continue on it. And so this is St. Paul, the ridge. whole eastern border. Of I drove property. up and down that street with my yeah. wife trying to figure out where is Bellevue Farms. So yeah. when St. Paul. Yeah, you get the railroad yeah. the bottom. The, the railroad the track. track. So yeah. Turn before the track. Hunt Street is here, Jedburg is here. This is the railroad tracks right here. And where's the overpass? The, oh, sure. the, no, the railroad tracks are right on right along Hunt Street. Yeah. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's so Al Foster's down below. Yeah. yeah. There's access what? to a trail there. I there. should know. And if you want to see a zebra, if you go down Jedburg Lane <laughs> to the Castlewood Stables, they have a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> All <fast>. right. <laughs> what is this? What is the property to the west? It's all Private. forest right now, right? This, all trees, yeah. This Our was um, a platted subdivision. It's called St. Paul Subdivision. But it's never been. No, it's literally Plat Book Three. If that tells you how old it is. Um, so, but yeah, it was never, um, never built or developed. And he was a platter, Conley. Yeah. He did that for the. Well, subdivision. this may this subdivision may very well predate Mr. Conley based on the, the plat book number. Um, I'm not sure, but it's interesting. There's a few there's a few areas in Wildwood that have these really small lot old subdivisions that were never built. There's one off Fox Creek called Diamond Park. So it's like right in the right in the corner of Rockwood Range. And it's this tiny little square of these little bitty lots that were never never built. They were platted. How how is that area? What's it presently zoned? Is it zoned for lots that size? No, no, it's zoned non-urban, so it's three acre minimum. But the lots were platted well before the zoning, right. which was sixty-five. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were. I don't. I couldn't even. I'd have to look. I don't even know how long ago they were platted. Eighteen hundreds, maybe. Hunt mm -hmm. Street's essentially a gravel road. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Well, I like the location. You know, from uh, like Steve was saying, I can't move it to the other corner. Right? It's a good location. It kind of leaves the whole rest of the property open to whatever we decide to or is developed yeah, later. Sorry, so down I, the hill. I don't think the Sherman residents would have any issue with that. You would hope. Not, you know. Do we have to improve St. Paul Road? I mean, not St. Paul, but Hunt Street. Yes, to the lease requirements. Right, um, and you can see you know, you curb the parking lot because you can see how the topo. Right. So yeah. It, is, yeah. Right. it is kind of cut into the hill, but there's no radio in that. But this this really gets us to the minimum that we're required to yes, this right. meets to provide the requirements. Right. Could this be done by January? Well, maybe not. Probably not because we're going to have to still go to bid and we're going to have to. So it'll be next year. Um, the very good news is that if we went to St. Louis County and said we're unable to meet it, they would probably extend it because they don't have the money to build it. Yeah, they don't so. want it back. Yeah, that's no. true. No, they they just can't afford the infrastructure yeah. costs that it would take. So if we say we need another year, they would be. Could it become? They a, might give us a hard time. Could it become a location? <laughs> They're aware of the. Kevin? It could, um, and the, it'll probably be one that we'll talk about. But with the remoteness and the arson that already took place out there, we have some concerns. I think about us in here, but I think that it will be on our list to discuss. Well, I don't think we want to put that on the St. Louis County portion. That's the other part. Yeah, that's true. That's the other thing is, I will tell you, and once it's open to the public, it, things may change when there are some people out there. But these buildings up here, yeah. we're constantly repairing them from vandalism and graffiti and I think that broken well, windows and kids from Sherman. I don't know. I don't know. I don't we think anybody ever gets in caught. In we just find out that it's broken. Well, so, so anybody want to, uh, I'll accept a motion on approving this plan and uh, tell me, uh, is it, is it going to go to the Parks Committee or the Council? Um, it will go to um, City Council. Motion to send this to the City Council. I'll make a motion. Nice. Jim seconded. All in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Max. Appreciate it. So, uh, discussion of the work program. The work program. Which is steadily being completed. I know, we made such big progress <laughs> that I had to done? put it. New work <laughs> and I did a tally sheet on each one because I was so excited that we're like, not going to What? <laughs> you, man, you really went all out in this park. I must have had extra time today. <laughs> um, okay, so our first one is complete. This was our, our um, the 11th display banner that was debuted at Celebrate Wildwood. So, number one, complete. Number two is now complete. This one was underway at our July meeting, and that was the tuck pointing of the uh, WPA wall at the Old High School. That looks great if you haven't had a chance um, to see it. There are still some areas that the brick, um, that the tuck pointer recommended that we go ahead and do relatively soon. Um, but every area that was critical and areas that were missing stone and brick have all been prepared. It looks really good. And means one and two are complete. Is not. That's our historic marker. We're still waiting on that bridge. It will not happen this year. We hope it will happen in 2020. Um, so Rick is getting, getting gear. I don't know. Is that public works department? <laughs> Joe Rick, he's got it. <laughs> he's killing our percentages on our work <laughs> program. <laughs> um, okay, we're just we're drop that off because we want 100%. Just right. drop that off because we can't achieve that. Okay. There's no way. Okay. We'll just make a motion to amend it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been perfect. Perfect record. Uh, we just went through um, Bellevue Farms, so that one's underway and will now be active. We can check it. <coughs> um, our first not started one is a tribute for Lisa Kelp. We'll still work on that and make progress. All of our, we've made such big progress in the last month with all of our stuff that was debuted at Celebrate Wildwood, so we can kind of start pecking away at a few other things um, afterwards. So number six is underway and it's on, I think we need to add a category that's ongoing so it doesn't look like we haven't completed it because we're never going to complete it. But um, So this one is for public relations efforts in our Gazette website and e-newsletter. And so just let you know, since these all happened since July, we had um, two articles in the Gazette. We had the Big Chief, the Route 66 event listed also in the Gazette our special events. Um, our, the website has been updated, so Mary Cliff has now been added, the new book, the new points of interest map have all been added, that's from your all's page on the website. And then in the e-newsletter, we've advertised the book for people to come pick up and um, the Big Chief 90th anniversary as well. So that one is underway. Training, we've had two completed. Oh, I have it not started, my television, no, but it is underway, and we'll have, we'll try to get at least one more in before the end of the year. Um, number eight is our points of interest map, and 2019 is complete. So, that one is going well, I think, again, we'll have one more set of um, scenic byways, which is this quadrant kind of in the city up here for 2020, and then that map will probably be full for its course. Okay, S and Lock Cabin. That's our last one, but I think I'm gonna we're gonna just kind of give talk about it now. I think while I have the pictures up for you. Um, so these are the four facades. This is the left side, and this has these are where there's two bigger windows. So you can see they're missing the smaller ones in between and a few others. But the back wall is com nearly complete, if not complete. The front wall is nearly complete, and then the right wall is just missing a couple. So um, I included an email at all of your places that has the photos. And it's an email from Carol Quigley, who was the, the architectural, uh, the architect in from Pattern Eyes from their Pennsylvania office, who's the historic preservation expert. And so she kind of gave an overview regarding um, what the facades were, how the logs were tagged, how they're how they're labeled and how they were laid out. And basically, her, their, their summary is that we have enough and can, and can rebuild the, the cabin. So they are working on giving us a formal report um, 
and, and some preliminary drawings for the cabin. We will start, um, there's a number of things that, that you all as the commission need to make decisions and recommendations on, and we'll start those conversations in October. But one of the most important is where are we gonna put it? Excuse me, and then we need to draft um, things like what level of finish we want on it, are we going to run electricity, you know, um, the roofing, the flooring, the finish around the site finishes, are we going to sell bricks for a patio? Those types of things. So we're going to start making all those decisions now that we know we can rebuild the cabin. We have enough to do that. Um, so we'll start that so we can, once we make some of those decisions, they can then draw, we'll have to do a phase two contract, and then we can have the architectural plans actually drawn up that we can go to bid on. So we're finally making significant progress. It feels. Great. So a homework assignment, come in with some ideas on locations? Yeah, the, if, you, if you want to, yeah, we can brainstorm. And if you have them in advance and you want to send them to me, because we'll prepare a report and probably give you some ideas that we've been thinking about, pros and cons to each location. But um, if you want to email in any suggestions, that's great. And we'll have a, ha have a lengthy discussion in October about the location selection. So. What is the scope of the present contract with Pattern Ives? How, how far is, that, is there a yeah. contract? Pre preliminary drawings um, will be provided, but they're not biddable. Right, okay. Yeah, so that would be phase two, because they, they've told us that without a location well, and those other things. So. I knew it wasn't complete, yeah. 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 What about uh, roof rafters and floor joists? That Some were there, um, so they said that it appears the joist ends of the first floor assembly were deteriorated in a number of areas, but that there were, um, they have a number of round logs that make up a good portion of the first floor system of the cabin. So we have some of it, but not all of it. And so on that, I think we'll have to kind of, once we get their preliminary, you know, their, their preliminary report, we can see that we can kind of make a decision from there based on what we have, what we need. Because you did that on the roof sheathing and flooring and right. windows and doors. Right. Now, the, we did get, um, I received an email from Mary um, Detrick, but she's in Essen. And she has a house that's 107 years old. She recently replaced her windows. She is going to donate the glass. So we will have historic glass. It obviously didn't come from the cabin. But um, she's going to donate that to the city for use in the current right. construction. Right. So that's pretty exciting. You and it stays in the family. Okay, it's too. from the Essen family too. From the Essen family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she was a great granddaughter, I think. <coughs> what was the size of the cabin? What's that's a very good question. Because when it was laid out, it doesn't look like enough. Yeah. Um, but the cabin was, it was, it was two stories. It was, okay what the exact dimensions are, I'm not sure. But what they did, it, it almost is, it's not exactly like one-to-one, -one, but the spacing in between each of the logs, they did chinking, so they had, you know, the smaller boards. And then on some they had plastered over just in time to try and preserve. But the spacing in between, it, it, it doesn't appear to be quite the size of the log, but close to it. So what was laid out, it's almost you know, one and a half times that height to maybe almost two times that height. They interlock about a quarter of the of a log at the interlocking corners. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back. Yeah, they do some of the uh, cabins. We looked at a couple cabins that the city was not going to take because we didn't have enough money, mm -hmm. and but the people were still going to tear them down. The one I remember was out of Melrose, mm -hmm. I thought, but those had windows in them. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could get some of those. Yeah. Um, the guy the one on I remember we talked to that one fire. guy. And yeah, the one on Melrose has been just in a pile, and it's been in a pile for years, and I believe it's been out in the elements, so I'm not sure about that one. But there is a, a gentleman off Wild Horse Creek Maybe that's the one I was thinking um, about. 
He was going to build a house out there, and he yes. didn't want to move. Yeah, he wanted he move had some mm -hmm. that annexes. I don't think those it. windows there would be <coughs> temporary with this cabin. That's yeah, they were definitely a different era. His cabin yeah, was. Much, but that's a much later cabin, I think. Yeah. I probably. Either way, we have to rebuild I, them. Yeah. And we, you know, we don't obviously have. You get good old historic windows. They're going to be shot anyway. They're going to be in bad shape and take almost as much to restore them as to get some new wood and replicate them. Okay. Yeah, I think having the glass may be the key. The glass, that wavy. Right. Yeah. The wavy glass, but still have to rebuild the frames. So. You can buy wavy glass, but it isn't the same. Teddy, what year was this? Do you remember? 1870s. Exactly. So where was the original location of this site? Off, up off 109, um, up near BA, Atherton. Yeah, up there by the power station, one of that place. Yeah. By Amarillo's big facility up there. Yeah, yeah it is a little, might have been a little north of there, but yeah. <laughs> so we don't have a historic community anywhere near it. No, <laughs> they were just pioneers out there on their own. Because Chris and I's house are near it, so that's historic enough. <laughs> we live right down the street. Right in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we can come back um, to that if we need. So um, number 10 is complete, that was our bylaws. 11 is now complete, that was the next chapter of the book. And if you notice, we have more complete than anywhere in our table on. Number 12 is work on um, Route 66. So now this is between the Essen cabin, we'll pull back the bicentennial, and Route 66 are going to be the next things that we're going to really try and kind of bring some focus to. Um, so like Paul noted, he had um, worked with a, a, a contractor and had the Route 66 logo. Is it paint? Is it just paint? Or is it some? He melted it on with a torch. Okay. Because it'll last a while. Yeah. Um, painted, or placed, melted onto mm -hmm. the street um, in front of the big chief. And that happened right before the event. So that's something that Paul, you know, has been talking with Public Works about to maybe try and do some more of those. So we're going to bring back to you some marking, some signage. We've struggled, as you know, with the sign company that we had been meeting with to try and come up with some unique Route 66 things. So we'll get back to that and look for probably switch companies. But um, And then we also have the piece of property that we recently purchased that will um, look to make into a Route 66 trailhead. So, Has there been any other progress or change this June when we last talked, I think, about the state turning over the right-of-ways right to the roads? Has anything changed there or moved there? No, I think I don't know. I'd, I'd have to check if this, if if that part even was finalized, and about the north south connector. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'm gonna double check. Kathy, you'll have to throw something at me if these are already there. But do we have Route 66 signs with an arrow that points to the 66? Because I just got back from vacation and out in New Mexico, they've got those everywhere, like a big sign with that with an arrow that points you so that if you think you're driving on Route 66, it shows you how you get there. Yeah, there's the, the way the byway signs are yeah. Yeah. The, So they have the, 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 the arrows that kind of get you to The street is signed, but, but I don't think How we you have, get to the street. Is right. Like, we don't, I don't believe we have, like, you know, along 100, we have directional signs that says town center, movie theater, mm -hmm. hotel. But I don't, we don't really have any that point you to Route 66 if you're not on it. If you're yeah, on it, were, there's I thought, you know, since we're interested in it here, I was interested in it on vacation, and I would have never turned off of a main road to go to there if it hadn't uh -huh. been for a, a directional sign. And once you're there, then you pick up all signs. They have those, mm -hmm. had those in New Mexico a lot of times on the roads. But just to get to the area, I don't know how many people would drive by and not even know there's a Route 66 here. You know? Well, it kind of wigwags across Route 100. Yeah, they, on you'll you'll see some of those signs yeah. as you cross that cross. Signs pointing, yeah, some out there. I'm not sure. But we, we also have some. Uh, we got the, the black and gold letters, historic uh, community mm -hmm. signs. Mm -hmm. 
has Route 66 on it too, actually. Right. They're, they're really they're hard to read. Yeah. Because there's like a dark gold on the black uh, side. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'll probably next to That that and that's all that's in you know, west of west of Long Okay. So we'll 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 be talking a lot about Route 66 coming up. Um so item 13 is to expand our social media efforts. And so you'll see since July, we did a number. This is Facebook, this is Twitter, this is Instagram. So we used all of our platforms to um, promote the, the booth and the distribution of the book and other things for Celebrate Wildwood. And then Travis did um, at the Route 66 event some photos of Big Chief and um, the booth you all have so we're continuing to do that and so while we're all here in this room and while Travis is here who usually which by the way I should have introduced you I'm sorry this is Travis Newberry <laughs> <laughs> Travis is a planner who's nice enough to help me because Joe and Terry are in the watershed erosion task force meeting so really don't tell them but you got the A team tonight but, <laughs> and I'll deny it <laughs> I'll say that in front of Joe that I said that my pastor <laughs> Joe <laughs> Anyway, Travis has been um, ramping up a lot of our social media. So if y'all want to make a push for more historic preservation um, social media, right now, that's the time to do it. Um, but I'll, we'll, I'll add that the Big Chief post that we did, which is just a few simple photos of the event, um, and a small, short caption, got 100 likes on our Instagram page, which is near the top five, I think, mm -hmm. posts that we've ever done. So yeah. people are interested in it. In, in the history components. Yeah. You're legendary. You're not quite as cool as the blues fountain when we did the fountain blue, but you know. <laughs> you're close. You're close. Pretty close. Big we'll Chief see. is a draw. Yeah. People like that. Really mm -hmm. They like. It's so unique. Yeah. And at the uh, <coughs> uh, Big Chief event, uh, I can't remember the lady's name in charge. Stephanie? Stephanie. Mm -hmm. uh, gave us a Baseball picture from 19. Oh, 1918, the Orville tri Tribute. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had just found it in yeah. the attic and Did you put it in a frame. That was great. Yeah, I'm, I still, it's on my desk and I need to scan it in. But I love they all had their collars popped up and it was, it was, it was a great picture. picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, the not started yet is our to do some type of master plan to accept donations and allocate funding. And then the last one is just to give you all an update on our three major projects that have to do with, um, aren't necessarily historic, but are in those areas. So the Manchester Road Streetscape, which is Route 66, is still having utility relocation. So it is taking forever. Missouri American Water is really the last one. Um, but they're taking the opportunity to upgrade some systems while they're out there. But that one's moving along, but pretty slow. State Route 109 is trucking along. There was another lane switch today, if you've driven it. Um, they've paved much of the new bridge, and they're, um, they haven't pushed back the date. I won't say they're completely on time. I won't make that commitment for them, but they have not changed the, the date. And their original contract was by November, basically the paving and such, the road was gonna be complete. So they're making good progress. Community Park Phase 3 should be finished in October. So after a little bit of a delay with the Army Corps of Engineers, um, some other, and then doing our cultural resource, um, our, with our archaeologists out there, we're finally back on track with that. So we had to change the bridge, um, which is because of our discussions with Army Corps of Engineers, and um, had to change the design to a, a full bridge that was a full span. But so we had to wait for production. That should be ready. We should be delivered in the next couple of weeks. So we're getting close on that one as well. So is the road going to open back up then, or will that wait until 109? So probably 109. The problem is, I mean, trying to keep people out. Yeah, the timing was good when we sh when we closed it because at at that point they were they were changing the, they were extending the water line, and they had to they needed the road closed because it was just too dangerous with the construction being built backing out. But what we found was no sooner did 109 go down to one lane and it was a cut through and they were flying through the park. And so it's just too dangerous down there. So the park will probably stay only one way in until 109. So 
but then we'll open it up. There'll be all these new pavilions. It'll be great. Right. Nobody will know what's happening down there. Okay, well, that's all I have. Um, we can talk a little bit more about S and Cabot if you have additional questions. Um, but we, as I noted, we'll bring that back um, in October to really get started on the meat of that conversation. I also have it here, one more thing. Um, I just printed off the pictures of the uh, brickwork at the Old Pine School Wall. That's what those photos are. So you can see a little closer. Okay. That's that's pretty much it. All the department has for this evening. Anybody in, got anything else they want to bring up? Okay, Lauren, take your own meeting to go to. Yeah. You home home. <laughs> or she could have just went over to that one. Right, she could have done that one. <laughs> could have both. I have one desire for the Essendon Law Cabin. I would like to set that up, not just as a building and a park someplace, but to really set it up in an authentic homestead. So it's where it's the way it would have been. Uh, not necessarily with the patio outside, but so it really looks well, the way a cabin would have been then. To really do a historical reconstruction, not of just a cabin, but of a homestead site. And then use it for re reenactments or demonstrations, you know, continuing education kind of thing. Get school kids out there and watch people make apple butter or soap or tan leather or whatever folks did back then. So where, where the possibility of those locations are? Mm -hmm. Instead of everybody, so I'm, city properties, there are possibilities for that. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we could stars on the map to show where that's at, to mm -hmm. see if we can get to where you like something like he's talking about. Yep, and you know what There's else? There's only gonna be limited places that you can do something like Ooh, that. Yeah, I, I'm I feeling it's like up on the hill or right next to City Hall here. Yeah. That's Just little things that can be well monitored. And if something's going on there, you've got the support from the City Hall here. Well, that was one case in that. That yeah. is one we'll discuss, yeah. I, um, you know, I think every location that we that we have available has pros and cons to it. Um, you know, we're just getting started on the planning and design for the six acres um, to the west that we just purchased. And so, uh, you know, the goal, we really want to make sure with the four acres we have, that we have a good cohesive, you know, we don't want it to look like mishmash of, of different of different things and we want to do right by the cabin as, as well as the, yeah. the the public event space and the village green or whatever this turns out to be i don't know um but i think what i'll do is when we have when we bring back the locations i'll bring some i'll make sure i get out and take photos too so we can sit and really look at um kind of the thing areas surrounding each each spot we discuss because we have areas in community park we have a great little spot in Glencoe Park that could work. We have behind City Hall, we have Bellevue Farm, we have, you know, we have a variety of areas to discuss. So I think the siding of it is just as important as the cabin itself, that it be as accurate as the cabin is. Okay. Okay. So see so a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Chris. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. <coughs> the Aikians did a great job on time. They sure did. They're efficient. Joel, come in. Tell Joel to stay home. Right. Joel, come in. We'll have an hour and we'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs>